Hey everybody, this is Chuck Rowe from MSG. Thanks for joining us again for another webinar. Many growing nonprofits are stuck in this position of whether to outsource their finances or whether to keep on doing them in-house. So today joining me, the man of the hour, Brian Aronson of Burden KDV. Thanks for joining, Brian. Thanks, Chuck. Glad to be here. Now, when people are making that decision, whether they should be um, you know, outsourcing or trying to do things in-house, what's that top reason or two that nonprofits finally take that plunge and say, you know what, I just need to start outsourcing this. Yeah, I, I think the top reason is is um, staffing in, in capacity, right? Um, you know, we see a lot of entities that, you know, if, if they were to lose their bookkeeper, um, you know, maybe they there isn't a replacement or it could take two to three weeks or months to, to replace, um, where with outsourcing, you know, there's a whole team. Um, it's a team approach, you've got to, you know, even if someone were to leave your outsourced um, agency, um, there's a whole team of backup behind them. So even if they're taking Friday off, um, you know, the normal person that you work with, if they're taking Friday off and um, you need something, there's a whole team that's there. So I, th I think the biggest thing is people look at, um, you know, just capacity issues and how can they get more um, of that without, without risk, you know, without putting all their eggs in one basket. Well, even at a place like Bergen, um, there's so many different options that people could do with you. So it's not like they have to do everything with you, although they could, but they could choose like and say, just do our payroll or just do our monthly financials or just do our, you know, what are some of the options out there that they could choose from? Well, it's, it's a very tailored approach. Um, we always say we can do um, as little as you want or as much as you want. Um, so there's some clients that it's all we do is, you know, a, a cursory review of their internal financials, be it their QuickBooks or their, um, their Sage, just to make sure that things are in place um, or, or, you know, there's nothing obvious outside. There's others that we do, you know, we write the checks, we, we prepare the payroll, um, we, we send their invoices, um, obviously all with their approval and everything, but, um, you know, we write the checks, the client stops in and grabs them and signs them, but we are you know, for all um, purposes, uh, you know, their, their bookkeeper, their CFO. Um, so we can do everything in between, you know, if you just need um, someone to post transactions, if you just need someone to cut checks or just need someone to do payroll or a combination of those things, um, we can do, we can do any of those. Well, and, and about a tailored approach because it doesn't matter um, you know, the industry you're in or, or the size of your nonprofit, um, everyone has different needs and everyone has different skill sets already in house. So how can we, um, accommodate those? You bet. And, um, you know, one of the things that I always took advantage of when I outsourced, um, uh, financing and, and some of the times were with you guys, um, cause you guys did a great job. And, um, but one of the things that come to mind is for, for whenever I've used an outside source, it was really for that that third party kind of objective transparency. Um, so that way, I mean, you see, it doesn't happen all the time, but every once in a while you see these stories of um, maybe a nonprofit staff member, um, some money goes missing here and there. Uh, do you find that when someone does use a third party like you, that that happens less often or at the very least it gets caught quicker opposed to those that are doing everything in the house? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, we have we have seen those instances instances where um, when we when we do, when we do step in, um, maybe some things don't look right to us, and we're we're able to ask some questions. You know, if if it's if you're internal and you're looking at it month after month, it's probably um, not an issue, um, but or it doesn't pop out as much as it does um, when when it's that third set of eyes that that comes in and looks at it. So yeah, we, we do see those um, issues. It's not very often, um, but, but we do see the, the case where, um, you know, maybe there was some sticky hands um, somewhere uh, at the nonprofit that um, gets, gets caught, if you will, um, when there is that third set of eyes. Well, one of those tools that help with that is, is basically doing an audit. Um, you know, now you guys work in a bunch of different states. Every state has their own you know, their own set of laws, but, um, but for a lot of states, um, if you're over a certain amount of money and it depends on what state you're in, but a certain amount of money, you have to do an audit. But if you're under a certain amount, you should do a financial review with somebody. 
Um, so I assume that, that you guys do financial reviews and audits. Right? Yeah, yeah, there's multiple levels and, and you're just right, um, Chuck. We, we really base that on what the, what the third party requirement is. Um, so who's requiring the level of service that, that you need? So we get nonprofits that come to us and say, um, hey, we need an audit. And we'll say, well, who's, who's requiring you to have an audit? Is it, is it your bank or is it a, is it a funding agency? Is it the federal government? You know, like who, who is it? And, and, you know, if they say, yeah, it's a, it's a grant opportunity, um, then we'll weigh through that. Okay. What are the pros and cons that, you know, the, the cost benefit of, of an audit versus, um, you know, getting, you know, if it costs you um, X to get the audit, but, but you're, um, you know, turning around and, and getting X and grants, are you just washing them out? Um, but there are benefits to, to that. And there's, I say that by not discounting the audit, but the audit is a pretty extensive um, process. And we really just want the, it to be the, when it only happened when the third party is requiring it, because there are more targeted approaches that we can take that would give uh, a board um, confidence. So one of those being an internal control study, um, where that's a very targeted item instead of, instead of an audit, we come in and, and really just do an internal control study of your current processes and procedures and, and give you tips and hints and recommendations for maybe how you, you can beef up, up um, internal controls so that you minimize the risk of theft or, or um, loss of funds. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, there's the internal control. Um, there's a such thing as called an agreed upon procedure. We do those for nonprofits where they say, hey, will you come in and test 10 payroll transactions, 10 um, payable just, you know, transactions and 10 gross re or, uh, revenue receipts. And just make sure they're on the up and up. Um, and that, that's you know, much different than, hey, will you audit and produce um, a set of financial statements? Um, but, but we also obviously do the audit, the reviews, um, and the uh, compiled financials. So lots of different services, and we really want to tailor to exactly what those nonprofits need. And we do that through a discovery process, um, really asking the questions, who's, at, who's requiring this? Have you considered this? Here's some other options. Well, you've done one or two audits in your life and reviews, right? So um, from a nonprofit standpoint, or really any, any business or small business in general, what are some things that um, you would recommend for a nonprofit to do to help just prepare for when you do come for that day or two to, for the audit? Is there any things they could do for as far as a setting for you or having certain things ready or, or what, kind of, what kind of suggestions do you have? Oh, oh, you wouldn't believe it, Chuck. We've been put we've been put all over the place when it comes to settings. Um, is it the, you know, do you, do you put them in the hot, the hot uh, um, front office or do you put them in the basement, the stuffy basement? No. Um, yeah. Having, having a, a, you know, obviously a, a comfortable setting um, helps, but really the, to me, the preparation starts um, well, be, well before, you know, audit comes around. It's, it's about having your books, um, you know, reconciled on a regular basis, never getting behind, um, you know, in reconciling. Anytime you get behind is, is when people seem to get in trouble and, and cut corners. Um, you know, always, um, you know, one thing that we recommend is having a, um, for all of our um, bookkeepers, if you will, um, that they have a month end, um, quarter end, year end checklist that they're going through and filling out every month to make sure, did I reconcile this? Did I check this? Did I post that entry? Um, and that really keeps people, um, you know, kind of in line. And all of that is going to help, you know, come year end during audit prep time when, um, you know, the pesky auditors come in and, and request 140 different mm -hmm. items. Um, and, and, you know, you've got to produce those. So anytime you can be organized um, with that checklist and with your filing, um, is, is obviously going to help the efficiency of the audit. Well, one of the things you talked about earlier is that you want to work with um, the specific nonprofits during a discovery and figure out what kind of uh, knowledge and talents they might have and what you could bring to the table. And so when you think of things like um, payroll and accounts receivable and accounts payable and, you know, monthly financials, is there some service that you have that 
Um, if, if you were to tell somebody, okay, if there's one thing we could do for you, if there's like this one thing that you should probably take off your plate, what would that be? It's, it's usually payroll check. Um, the, the cost of outsourcing payroll has come down substantially um, over the years. I think a lot of people think that it's, no, I've got somebody in house. Um, I, why would I pay somebody? Um, well, as, as we all know, the, the compliance and the rules um, around payroll have, you know, continue to change and they, you know, unless you've got someone dedicated to that, um, it's hard to keep up and there's, there's, you know, good chance that there's going to be errors. And there's a lot of times that that person um, would be better off, um, you know, doing something else internally, um, working on another project than, you know, in that recurring payroll piece. So that's, that's usually a, a first place that we start um, is, is looking at the economics of, of outsourcing and the benefits that can come with that, not only from a cost standpoint, but um, from a, you know, maintaining compliance with, um, with the IRS and, and with the uh, um, oversight agencies. Well, no matter where I've been before, uh, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, uh, but you know, no matter where I've been before, when there is an in-house person that's in charge of payroll, I've never heard anybody say, like, oh boy, it's, it's payroll day. It's, it's time for me to input everyone's hours and this and that. No one's super excited about doing that. You're right. It, it, it is, um, it, it is a, one of those recurring tasks that can really drive people bonkers, if you will. Um, so looking at automating and looking at, um, looking at how, can, how can we make this um, a simpler process, and that's a lot of times what the outsource um, option provides. So last question for you is that we do work with a lot of nonprofits that are, that are really small, that don't have that opportunity to outsource quite yet. They're not at that level. Um, but if there was a tip or two for um, whether it be their finance committee or their board or their staff, um, what kind of tips do you have for people that do have to do everything in house? Uh, I, I think it's, you know, even if it is a, say a, a one or two person um, nonprofit um, at that time, there's, there's not a lot of segregation of duty issues. So that's where the board needs to get involved um, potentially in their, in their oversight and looking at the detail. Um, but, you know, find a, find a software um, that, that you can't afford. There's, there's QuickBooks um, online. And if you're a 501c3, um, you can go through techsoup.org um, for significantly discounted um, software. And you know you can they've they've got payroll options within there, um, but I'll tell you we work our our payroll offerings we work with you know nonprofits that only have two employees, um, and we work with nonprofits that have two hundred employees. So um, the the cost works um, for most agencies. It it's like you said earlier. It just depends what they already have in house for expertise. Well, before we go. If people want to learn more about the services you offer, where can they go? Uh, BergenKDV.com um, or, or reach out through Chuck and, and he'll connect us. So there you go. Well, you're a scholar and a gentleman. Thanks for joining today. Really appreciate it. And to everyone else, thanks for joining. Chuck Rowe from MSG. Catch you next time.